In today's video, we've got another vintage tech uh, episode, and this time we're going to take a look at this uh, Sedcore TC162 tube tester from the early 1970s. Now, the professional quality tube testers of the day can be broken down into two major categories the more comprehensive types that would measure the mutual transconductance of a tube and the uh, simpler uh, devices like this one here that measures cathode emission. Now while both types are very useful uh, to help you to identify bad tubes, uh, no tester is actually going to be suitable to actually tell you whether a particular tube will work properly in a given circuit, whether it's a radio, a television, or something like that. And the reason for that is because no tube tester puts that particular tube under the same operating conditions that a particular circuit would do. So really the best tester for any given tube, if it's questionable, is the device it was designed into. But on the other hand, a tester can be useful to help you identify bad tubes. Uh, if a tube has got uh, uh, some shorts between the pins or the electrodes, uh, if a tube has got uh, some grid leakage, or if it's got low emission, things like that, that can help to rule out a tube. But even if a tube tests good on a tester where it doesn't have any shorts, the grid leakage is low, that type of a thing, it's still a possibility that it may not work in the circuit that it was intended for, but at least it helps you to rule out uh, obviously bad tubes. The Sencor TC162 uh, is a emission type tube tester, as I mentioned, but there's additional measurement functions that it has. The shorts measurement function allows you to measure for shorts between any of the pins that are supposed to be isolated from each other. Now, in this case, a short is defined by a resistance between the two pins that is anything less than 300k ohms. The emission function uh, basically sets the tube up into a diode configuration and uh, measures the tube performance at near the full rated cathode current. The life test is used in conjunction with the emission test. It can also be called a filament voltage sensitivity test. And the idea is that when you push the life test switch into the test position, you look for how much the emissions drop uh, for that given tube. And this is a pretty good indicator of how well worn a tube is or how close it is to its end of life. And finally we have the grid leakage test. And the grid leakage test on this particular tester is actually very, very sensitive, more so than a lot of testers that are out there, and really gives you a good early indication of tubes that may not work in some very sensitive circuits like AGC circuits. So certainly any tubes that show shorts on any of the pins, they're ones that definitely have got to be uh, got tossed out. Um, I found that uh, tubes that have got low emissions that are kind of uh, getting towards the questionable area are often uh, not going to work well when actually used in the application. So that's a pretty good indication that it's time to replace that tube. And then certainly tubes that have got uh, high grid leakage. They are also candidates that, uh, with tubes that really need to go. But as I said earlier, if the tube passes all of these tests, there's still a possibility it may not work in a particular circuit but at least you know that it's not obviously bad. So it is just a screening tool, but uh, not an absolute uh, go-no-go type of a test. This tester was actually built uh, in the late 70s. Uh, so it's a kind of a late model in terms of a tube tester. And one of the advantages is that it's solid state. You'll notice there's no vacuum tubes in the schematic. There's a number of switches uh, and a multi-tap transformer. And then a JFET is used in a kind of a balanced bridge configuration here to actually drive the meter for the emissions and the grid leakage tests. An important accessory with any of these tube testers is the setup book. The setup book lists all of the tubes that can be tested by the tester and the configuration for all of the setup switches in order to test that particular tube. Now before we go ahead and actually use it, uh, we'll follow the advice of uh, my uh, friend Dave Jones from Down Under. Uh, don't turn it on, take it apart. Well, I can't do the Australian accent, but we can take it apart and take a look and see what's inside. Okay, with all the screws taken out, we can uh, lift the uh, panel out of the housing and see what we've got underneath. Okay, so here we go. Here's our array of tube sockets, all uh, hand-wired up and ready to go. Uh, our transformer is here. That provides not only the power to use for the emissions test and the grid leakage test, but also provides the various filament voltages and they're all selected by this first switch over here. The next switch here with the ring of resistors going around it is the one that selects the 
a test current for the emission test. And then uh, the next switch here selects which pin is actually being used for testing, either for the shorts test and also which uh, pin is essentially the control grid that is actually used for the emission and grid leakage test. And then finally we've got our uh, mode switch here to go the shorts, emissions, or grid leakage testing. The life test switch is down here. And then uh, this row of switches along here are the pin elimination switches. There are some tubes that uh, where that pins have got to be omitted out of the test circuit in order to read properly. So that's what those switches do. And the setup book kind of details all of that. And of course the circuit board over here houses that circuit that I showed on the schematic. And there's a couple of diodes and a JFET on there, the only semiconductors. The rest of it is just a couple of resistors and capacitors. And it's bolted right to the back of the meter. And that's essentially what's, uh, what's inside this tester. You know, again, it's an all solid state, so there's no warm-up period associated with the tester itself, but of course there is for the tubes that you're testing. So let's put it back together and actually go test some tubes. Now the first thing you want to do before you even plug any tubes in is uh, turn the tester on and adjust the meter zero uh, to zero out the meter. Let's start off by testing this 12BY7A, which is also known as a 12BV7 and a 12DQ7. So if we take a look and locate uh, that here in the book, here's the 12BY7A uh, row right here. This indicates that pins 6 and 9 need to be switched out, that the filament is set to 12, the load switch is set to C, and the setup switch is set to 2, and we'll insert the tube into socket 3. Okay, so we'll lock out pins 6 and 9. Uh, the filament is a 12 volt filament, so we'll select the 11 to 14 position here. The load needs to be set to position C and the setup to position 2. And now we're ready to put the tube into socket number 3. Now with the tube in place, let's start by doing the shorts test. For the shorts test, you go to the shorts function. And the tube is going to start warming up, and we'll repeat this test later after the tube has warmed up also. And the idea is you rotate the setup switch and watch the shorts indicator light right here. Now you might get some momentary flashes, and that's okay. And sometimes you get a very light, slight flicker, and that's okay too. But if in any of the positions that short light illuminates continuously, that indicates that we've got a short of 300k ohms or less on any of those pins. And this uh, is essentially passing that shorts test. We'll return the setup a switch to position 2 as indicated in the book, and we'll look at the emissions test. Now the emission test here is uh, solidly in the good range, and that's a good thing. If we want to run the life test here, we can push the life test switch over and see if we get a drop in that emissions. And it looks like it's staying pretty steady. And it should because this is an unused tube I just pulled out of the box. So, uh, so we pass the emission test and we'll go to the grid leakage test. The grid leakage test we want to look on the lower scale here and we can see that sitting right at the very bottom which indicates that the grid leakage is uh, well, well uh, above 300 mega ohms. So, uh, so this tube is actually quite good. Now you may find with some tubes that as they warm up a little bit longer that grid leakage will start to come up. But this is a new tube and this looks like it's okay. Just before we finish up, since the tube has had a couple of minutes to warm up here, I'm going to switch back to the shorts test here and, uh, and repeat the shorts test. And again, looking for any kind of a solid indicator on the shorts indicator. Because uh, sometimes some of these shorts can be thermally induced. So I would say that this tube uh, has passed the test here. It's got a good likelihood that it may be okay and can be used in the circuit, but it's not an absolute certainty. The next tube we'll take a look at is a 6BE6. If we take a look in the book under that one, we can see that uh, none of the pins need to be eliminated. And we're going to go to a 6 volt filament, uh, load of D, uh, the setup of position 1, and socket 4. Okay, so none of the pins need to be locked out. We can just pull the reset switch to bring all those pins up. Go to a 6 volt filament and the D on the load and set, and set up number 1 and we insert ourselves into socket 4. So let's start by doing the shorts test. We'll go to the shorts position here and again watch our little light as we rotate around to see if we have uh, any shorts in the tube and I don't see any here right now, so that's a, that's a good thing. Let's go back to 1 and take a look at the emissions. 
Uh, emissions actually look pretty good, so that's a, that's a good thing here. We could run the life test here. I pull that life test switch over. I don't see the emissions dropping very much, so I think we're okay on that. Now let's go to grid leakage. And we'll take a look at the grid leakage test here, and that looks pretty good as well. So this would indicate that, hey, this tube is probably pretty good. Now again, I remember I mentioned that some tubes, the grid leakage can start to increase as the temperature comes up. Now I've left this thing on the grid leakage position and look at what's happening with the meter. So this is one of those things that if you were tested this tube a little bit too quickly, you might, might have missed the fact that this leakage is starting to come up now here. Now we've quickly gone out of the good range, into the questionable range, and now we're in the bad range. So this tube, if you just spent a minute or two testing it, you might have not seen that the grid leakage actually gets bad when the tube fully heats up. So this is actually a bad tube and probably would not work very well in most circuits. Now sometimes when you look up the tubes, you might find, like this 6BH11, that there's actually multiple lines for setup. And what that means is that particular tube has got multiple sections. This one happens to be a dual triode pentode tube. So each setup condition here is to test each section of the tube. So you essentially have to test the tube three times with those three switch configurations. Now one thing that I didn't mention is this guy right here. This is actually a plate cap. Um, for a lot of tubes uh, like this uh, 6146, the plate connection is actually made on the top and not through one of the pins. So after you stick the tube in the socket, you need to attach the plate cap uh, to that as well before you begin testing. I hope you enjoyed this vintage tech video about this uh, Sencor TC162 tube tester, a really nice solid little solid state unit from the early 1970s to help give you an idea of whether some of the tubes you're looking at are any good or not. Again, no tube tester can tell you whether the tube is actually good enough to work in a particular application because it doesn't test it under those same conditions, but the, uh, a bad indicator is usually going to be an indicator that the tube is not going to work well. So it is essentially one screening method that you can use uh, for tubes in your tube base gear. Thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, uh, give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And thanks again as always for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bye-bye.